Hey guys, Corey here from designsbyifr.com and in today's video I want to address how to properly clean your water blocks. Now over time your system liquid will create different deposits of material in all your water blocks, all the channels, and sometimes in little corners in the water blocks where there is not much flow. Now a lot of this can be annoying to remove and it's certainly something that you do not want in your system. You want as much free flow as possible. So today I'm gonna to show you the best ways of cleaning out all of that gunk and getting your water blocks looking brand new. And guys, don't forget if you do enjoy videos like this or custom PCs or reviews then consider subscribing we have plenty of those on the channel so let's get into it so here I have a water block it's fairly dirty it does have a buildup of material in it it has been in a system for the past couple of months and I want to open it up and see what we have inside it is clear there is a bit of buildup on the inside as it is plexi and we can see through it now keep in mind guys this water block here is actually copper nickel plated so before we open up this water block i want to explain to you guys what nickel plating is nickel plating is the process of adding a real thin layer of the nickel over a particular metal surface now because it's so thin it is certainly subject to abrasion if you are treating it too rough when you are cleaning it and the certain type of chemicals that you do use to clean the water block can also affect that nickel plating and start stripping it off now there have been coolants that are also known to strip back some of that nickel plating which is not a bad thing but it does ruin the aesthetic and it just reveals the copper underneath which is as you know nickel and copper are pretty much the same on the pH scale so the mixing of metal there isn't going to be an issue. So what we want to do is to try and avoid stripping that nickel off or damaging it in any way. Now there are a few suggestions that a lot of people throw around as to what you should use to clean these blocks themselves. A lot of people say tomato sauce for example, a lot of people say rubbing alcohol, some people say warm water with a bit of soap and some people also say white vinegar diluted with water and toothpaste as well so let's actually take a closer look at what you should use and why and i'm going to explain my whole thought process into which particular ingredient i would actually choose myself to clean this water block now the way i choose my selection is i want to look at the acidity level of every single one of these ingredients that i just mentioned acid is certainly capable of stripping this nickel plating and that's something that we want to avoid so my plan of attack would be to start at the more neutral alkaline levels and then work my way to the more acidic levels if they cannot actually clean this water block now remember the more acidic the more it's going to eat into it and the more your chances of damaging that nickel plating are however it is able to withstand some acidic levels but as you get more and more the chances of damaging it become more increased after all it is a very very thin layer of nickel plating so everyone knows on the ph scale seven is neutral and that is water so water is the absolute best place to start now what i would do is add a bit of soap Soap on the pH scale is actually alkaline. It sits about nine on the scale, whereas water is at seven. So if you're adding a bit of soap to water and diluting it, that's actually going to bring the water off that neutral level and a tiny bit into the alkaline zone, creating a nice warm soapy mixture to clean the block with. Now personally, what I like to do is I like to use a bit of paper towel to wipe it down. And then to get in those fins, I actually like to use a toothbrush. The toothbrush has nice soft bristles, which are actually going to remove the buildup and it's gonna get in between all of those fins to make sure that's all nice and clean in there as well, to make sure there is good flow. So if that ends up failing, the water and the soap does not work, the next option would actually be toothpaste. It is slightly, very, very slightly acidic, more neutral than anything, sitting at 6.83, so it's just under that neutral scale, slipping into the acidic side of things, and you can simply use a toothbrush with toothpaste just like you would with your teeth and clean the water blocks. Now, when I say 6.83, I do mean that is the average. If you start adding in toothpaste with extra bleach and everything added in, then of course the acidity level will raise. So if the toothpaste fails, then we climb down into the acidity level once again, sitting at 5.5 pH, we have rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol, as you all know, we use to clean off all of our thermal paste on the backside of the block. So we know that it's not gonna cause 
too much damage or any damage at all. So it's also great for using it on the inside. Now, one thing to remember guys, do not use the rubbing alcohol on any plastic plexi water block tops because it really doesn't react well with plastic, makes it brittle and it can cause stress cracks and cracks throughout the acrylic itself. So keep the acrylic down to just water and soap, but you are fine to use the rubbing alcohol on the actual nickel plated part of the water block. Now, a lot of people like to use white vinegar to clean their water blocks. Definitely do not use white vinegar straight. It sits at 2.4 on the acidic scale. That will certainly damage the water block. A lot of people dilute it with some warm water, which is great. That actually reduces the acidity. Now I can't tell you the exact pH, but it reduces it significantly. You only need a tiny bit of white vinegar in that mixture as well, guys. And that will slightly make the water acidic and that should clean it up nicely as well. And lastly, tomato sauce. Now, there was a post recently on Facebook actually saying that people use tomato sauce to clean their water blocks. I would highly recommend not doing that. Um, you can as a last resort, but I would try and avoid it. Now the reason is, tomato sauce contains citric acid. It sits at 3.4 to 4.7 on the acidic scale. So it's quite acidic and that could certainly damage the water blocks. Now, if you think about it, 3.4, if you're getting 3.4 acidity level, and you compare that to white vinegar by itself, which is 2.4, it's only one level away in acidity level. So it is quite acidic. I'd certainly try and avoid it at any cost. If you do have to use it, don't be very rough on how hard you are actually rubbing because it certainly probably will cause some damage. Now, it doesn't always happen, guys. It does not always happen. It's not to say that it has come up with great results, but over time, if you're constantly using it, eventually you will see that wear and tear. So now that we've gone through the pH scale and what all of the different materials are actually sitting on that acidity level, let's actually go ahead and try our methods to see what actually works on this particular water block right here. Now this is a copper water block with nickel plating on top. Very thin layer of nickel plating. So let's actually see how well it does. Okay, so now that we have the water block ready to go, we've got our hot soapy water ready to go. Let's actually take this thing apart and we'll see if the soapy warm water can actually remove all of the gunk that is stuck within the fins of this water block. So the fittings themselves look pretty good. There's no buildup of gunk around them. And in fact, from this angle, the water block actually looks pretty decent. Doesn't actually look like there's too much buildup in here at all. Apart from down this section, you guys won't be able to see it, but I can see a bit of a buildup. So once it's open, I'll be able to show you guys a closer look. So as you guys can see, we do have a slight build up on the actual heat sink itself where the fins are. I'll turn it this way so you guys can see it. We do have a slight build up there. That's just all of the little gunk passing through the loop and then getting stuck there. And on the inside, I don't know how well you guys can see that, but on the inside, right down there, we do have a buildup of gunk as well. Now, I'm fairly confident that the toothbrush will be able to remove the majority of this stuff, as it actually does look pretty clean. Doesn't look too bad at all. So let's give the water a go. I might actually take these screws out on the back as well. Now guys, please do keep in mind that a lot of manufacturers as well will have a void warranty sticker on there. As soon as you do take it apart, that sticker will break and you will avoid your warranty. So you are doing it at your own risk, but you certainly don't want a dirty water block in your system. So I do think that that risk is worth taking. So as you guys can see, just a little bit of a, uh, what does it feel like? It feels a bit sticky, like a bit of a, a paste almost like a paste that was just stuck on the inside there. So I'm quite confident that this is actually going to clean up very easy with the soapy water. So um, let's get ahead and we will give that a go. Also guys, the good thing about this soapy water is it's very safe to use on the acrylic part as well.
So for the actual acrylic part itself, I wouldn't actually recommend using the toothbrush on it. The bristles are certainly hard enough to create little marks and scuff marks on the acrylic itself. So just grab yourself a bit of paper towel and just give it a bit of a wipe down because the acrylic won't really hold too much onto its surface. So as you saw guys, that did clean up the water block, the soapy water. It actually worked really well. Um, the water block wasn't actually that dirty, but it was certainly receiving some buildup. And if we left that over time, that buildup would have gotten more and more, and then it would have become more of a problem. And I'm more than certain that the soapy water probably wouldn't have done the job that we actually experienced today if we left it for a few more months. So if that did fail, then I would have moved on to the rubbing alcohol or the toothpaste. Both of them are a good option to use, guys, that um, they're slightly acidic, real slightly, so they would have eaten into that gunk a bit and hopefully removed it and created a clean water block. As I said before, all of the other ones are even more acidic. You want to try and avoid them if you can. If you do have to use them, they're certainly, certainly fine to use for that one-off clean. Just don't apply too much pressure because you want to try and keep that abrasion away from the nickel plating as it is a very thin layer. Anyway guys, that will do it for me for today. If you guys enjoyed this video, remember to like the video and comment down below. Definitely keen to see what your thoughts are on the different materials that we suggested for cleaning water blocks. Is there anything else that you guys use to clean your water blocks? I just use some of the more common ones to my knowledge that people do use. Uh, suggest down below any other materials or liquids that you do use to clean your own water blocks. Anyway guys, I'm out for now. If you did enjoy this video or enjoy videos similar to this, then consider subscribing. We have plenty of other videos like this on the channel, so definitely browse around and see if there's any others that can help you out. Plenty of custom PCs, water cooling tutorials, DIY modding tutorials, especially if you're on a budget, guys. And of course, reviews, and we'll see you all in the next one.